Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike. You guys rock with me on Mike's Intellectual Corner. On today's episode, we're going to be checking out the, the Day the Dinosaurs Died by Kurtz. Uh, with that being said, again, we're just going to dive right into it. Let's go. One of the greatest illusions in life is continuity. 66 million years ago, the continuity of the dinosaurs had been going on for around 165 million years already, and it didn't seem this would change anytime soon. The world was warm and pleasant, and most of the land was covered with lush forests and an incredible diversity of trees, flowers, ferns, and trillions of critters. I think it's crazy, honestly, to think that there's even light, that there is even life like million crazy enough to even think there was life thousands of years ago but you know i'm not i'm not done saying you know i just think it's it's crazy to think that there was life thousands of years ago millions of years ago you know what i'm saying and uh, to me that's just why i love history like it, it's just it's crazy just to think that it's kind of surreal if you think about it just to know that there was like so so, so much stuff going on before you even born before you even thought of you know Burns and trillions of critters Dinosaurs were ubiquitous and had diversified into hundreds of species of all shapes and sizes. Titanotaurs, large, gentle giants, shared the world with famous beasts like Tyrannosaurus rex or Edmontosaurus. Pectinodon hunted in the undergrowth, while Edmontosaurus wandered coastlines and swamps. An ancient paradise, a world of plenty, full of life. What's even crazier too about that, you know, it's so full of life and so diverse at this point. You think I remember this at this point too, there's still like little little tiny little mammals running around too, which is just adding on to that diversity because obviously these are all, you know, reptiles and um you know, stuff like that. But it's just crazy to think you know, just think of that how diverse it was truly back then and even though it's so diverse now, it's nowhere near how it was back then. A world of plenty, full of life. 66 million years ago, maybe on a Tuesday afternoon, life was the same as it had been the day before, or a thousand years before, or pretty much a million years before. Things were good for our feathered dinosaur buddies, until a tiny, tiny detail in the sky changed. If there were dinosaurs watching the stars, one night they may have noticed the appearance of a new star, a tiny dot that for many weeks slowly became bigger and brighter. You know how crazy that would be to see in like today's time, just see a star coming closer and closer, well not a star, but you know, an asteroid. An asteroid coming closer and closer, you know what I'm saying? That would be so crazy. But what's even crazier is that there's, that, like, that stuff is happening around us all the time. Like, little asteroids flying around us all the time. I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, they're called, like, damcloids or something like that. And they're, like, the size of, like, a bus to the size of, like, a skyscraper or something like that. They range. And essentially, they're too small for us to pick up. And there's like thousands to millions of them just flying around our solar system. And we've only co copied like 0.5 of them. You know what I'm saying? We've only recorded like 0.5 of them. So it's just, it's just crazy to think so that this could happen at any time, really. A dot that for many weeks slowly became bigger and brighter. Until one fateful day, it looked like another small moon in the night sky. And then it faded from sight as it dipped into Earth's shadow. For a few more hours, the illusion of continuity was upheld until it was not anymore. In the morning, the object suddenly appears again. Now, almost as large as the sun in the sky and growing every moment, heading for the coast near the Yucatan Peninsula. It takes the asteroid only seconds to pass through the thin layer between space and the ground. I bet you when that thing hit too, it probably punched a hole in the atmosphere the size of like the moon, if you think about it. Cause I'm pretty sure this thing is huge. And obviously you're gonna have blowback from something that's gonna punch through like that coming that fast. So like I can only imagine like everything that just got sucked out with that, you know what I'm saying? Which is such a crazy like experience to 
very experienced, you know what I'm saying? Android only seconds to pass through the thin layer between space and the ground to make contact as it enters the atmosphere at almost 60 times the speed of sound. Let's stop time. Here, we see the unnamed asteroid about to commit speciesite. Larger than Mount Everest, it reaches from the ocean high into the atmosphere, higher than passenger planes would fly millions of years later. At this moment, the world was one way. Yeah, just like a, uh, a, a hydrogen bomb millions of years before, you know what I'm saying, it was ever actually thought of. I don't know, guys, it's a pretty crazy thing about though. Let's go ahead and get back to it. Would fly millions of years later. At this moment, the world was one way. In a fraction of a second, it would be fundamentally different. Let's make the transition. As the asteroid hits the shallow ocean and the bedrock below, the energy of billions of nuclear weapons is released all at once as the asteroid vaporizes. A flash of light illuminates the sky as an eerie bright white sphere grows over the Gulf of Mexico. Bedrock melts into seething hot plasma at tens of thousands of degrees Celsius. The thermal radiation from the explosion travels at the speed of light and immediately burns everything within a radius of about 1,500 kilometers, while the energy from the... Imp Can you guys imagine if you guys' city is like right under that, like... You know what I'm saying? Is he, he's talking about it just gets turned into liquid. So that means your city just got turned into liquid. You know what I'm saying? Like, just think of that. Like, everything is there one minute and then flash, liquid, gone, magma, plasma, everything. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's diabolical, really. And it's, it's nature. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, nature, you scary. <laughs> Is, while the energy from the impact pushes so hard against Earth's crust that it loses all strength and flows away from the impact site like a liquid, creating a hole 25 kilometers deep and 100 kilometers wide. The ocean is pushed back for hundreds of kilometers, like when a kid jumps into a puddle. As the crust bounces back, melted and flowing crust forms a temporary mountain stretching 10 kilometers into the sky. An incredible amount of material is blasted into the higher atmosphere or even out into space. See, I feel like if uh, the dinosaurs who are close enough to see it but not get affected immediately from it, I feel like a lot of those dinosaurs probably died from, like if, you're, if they're like, you know, normal animals and stuff, they probably died from like a heart attack or something, seeing something that crazy from, you know what I'm saying, obviously millions of years, same thing in a, in a flash of a moment is... You know what I'm saying? Apocalypse. So I feel like a lot of those, I don't know, a lot of those, I feel like a lot of those really probably died from a heart attack. Back to it. The amount of material is blasted into the higher atmosphere or even out into space as much as 60 times the original mass of the asteroid. The violence of the strike is felt everywhere on Earth within minutes. A magnitude 11 earthquake may be the most powerful quake any living thing has ever witnessed in billions of years. It is so insanely... It almost makes you wonder, with just that happening, being able to happen on the other side of the earth, it almost makes you wonder, like, did it also help, kind of help form the Gulf of Mexico, you think? You know what I'm saying? Because it looks like, obviously, a lot of people probably think that it was already forming and stuff, but it looks, I don't know, it looks like it could have helped a little bit, maybe. Yes. It is so insanely strong that in India it might have shaken gigantic lava fields and causes volcanic eruptions that would last for 30,000 years and cover half of the Indian subcontinent with lava. Even on the side of Earth opposite the impact, the ground still moved by several meters. Nobody would sleep through this day. The gigantic explosion crashes against the atmosphere with unprecedented violence and causes a shockwave that reaches speeds of more than 1,000 kilometers per hour near the site of impact. Similar See, that's why I think that, um, that's, I don't know, it's crazy to me to think that uh, with all that going on, that a lot of them, a lot of the little mammals, obviously we see how they were able to survive because they were able to burrow under and they were affected by these, these high winds and fires and all, all this crazy apocalyptic crap going on above. But they were unaffected because they were, you know, burrowed 
below, but I mean, even though I'm sure they were affected, I'm sure like, you know what I'm saying, Earth was moving and all that stuff, but you know what I'm saying, they were still alive though, obviously. Near the site of impact, similar to the hyper hurricanes on gas giants like Neptune. In middle America, basically any soil, vegetation or animal is just shredded into pieces and catapulted thousands of kilometers away. Now, the previously displaced oceans return. As the temporary mountain at the site of impact collapses, a ring of tsunamis as high as one kilometer, enough to cover all skyscrapers humans would ever build, heads in all directions. As they crash into the coasts of the continents surrounding the impact, they will drown thousands of kilometers. Can you guys just imagine, like, this stuff just sounds like the plot of a movie. Like, can you imagine some, this much freaking chaos going on around the Earth? Like, hmm. They will drown thousands of kilometers of coastline. 15 hours later, some of the waves that get refracted around South America will still tower as much as 100 meters into the sky. But we still haven't talked about the worst thing yet. A lot of the debris yeeted into space will orbit Earth for thousands of years. Some may hit the moon or even Mars. But most of it comes right back. When things fall through the atmosphere at such speeds, they get very hot, as in hundreds of degrees hot. And this happens to millions of tons of material everywhere. This rapidly heats up the atmosphere to insane temperatures. That is ridiculous. I mean, can you guys imagine that? Like, I, not, like, I feel like with that type of heat comes a huge pressure down. Like, maybe, if I'm not mistaken, but that's what just, it feels like, like a huge pressure is going to come down with that. But I don't know. This rapidly heats up the atmosphere to insane temperatures. We don't know exactly how hot it got or how long this heat shock lasted, but there are two ideas here. Either the air was heated to hundreds of degrees for a few minutes, or to thousands of degrees for around one minute. In any case, the air became as hot as the inside of an industrial oven. How bad the global effects of this were is contested, but if enough heat reached the surface, a lot of plants and animals would have died very quickly if they couldn't bury themselves or escape into caves. The heat, together with raining debris, also may have ignited material on forest floors. And, and see, and my thing is too, like, obviously before this, before the hell, it turned it, it, Earth into hell. Well, when, it, when the hot air, like, came down so hard, was it, do you think it was as bad as we think? You know, obviously it was horrible. Do you think it was as bad as we think though? Because obviously hot air rises. So that's what I'm thinking. That's the only reason I, I say that, you know, just putting out theories here and there. That's all. Its floors and sparked wildfires as the earth rotated under the searing hot blue. In a few hours, massive wildfires were probably burning around the globe. Some of them may have lasted for months and turned Earth into a horrifying, hot, hellish version of itself. As the day of the impact draws to an end, many of the dinosaurs are already dead, but the worst is still to come. The gigantic plume of vaporized material reaches the upper atmosphere and spreads around the whole globe. It's actually kind of crazy that anything even was able to survive this let alone the just, you know, like little small mammals. Obviously, we have alligators, uh, certain crustaceans, just stuff like that. But it's crazy that they did. It's kind of like you want to almost hear that story. You know what I'm saying? I'll, but, you know. Rise material reaches the upper atmosphere and spreads around the whole globe. Together with the soot from the burning planet and the aerosols generated at impact, the planet sinks into a deep darkness with only the remaining raging fires illuminating the scenery. Whatever plants survive the firestorms will now be starved for sunlight as global photosynthesis is temporarily shut down. I mean, all I can say is eventually, obviously, years, decades, hundreds, probably even thousands of years into the future, at least that, that ash and the lava and stuff, you know, from after the earth can get back to where you know it once was can help you know fertilize for new growth and all that stuff but it who knows how long it actually took for it to actually get to that point though you know for sunlight as global photosynthesis is temporarily shut down within days temperatures crash as much as 25 degrees celsius the oceans were especially hard hit the lack of sunlight killed over 90 percent of plankton which form the basis of the food web of marine life. Ultimately, 
This would kill off the large marine reptiles and ammonites that used to dominate the seas. The biosphere the survivors now find themselves in is like an alien landscape. Ash, debris and the burned remains of the formerly lush and blooming life cover the ground. The sky is dark. Yeah, can you guys just imagine like the rapid change uh, that just happened just like that, you know what I'm saying? Like there was no, there was no warning, there was no nothing. And like you said, for millions of years, it was just like that. And then boom, gone. And to me, it's crazy that like things like, obviously oxygen levels dip down, but I'm surprised they didn't, they almost didn't just disappear with, you know, obviously photosynthesis being put on whole world round on top of, um, you know what I'm saying, ash putting, put, getting put on everything on top of cloud coverage on top of a hole in, in our freaking atmosphere. Probably who knows how big, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just crazy to think about that we were able to come back from that. That's why, again, it's so crazy to think that if there is life, who knows what they went through, you know what I'm saying, to get to the point that they are. Because, you know, Lord knows we've been through a crazy amount on here on Earth. It's dark and it's cold and fresh food is scarce while fungi thrive. For months and years, the planet will be a hostile and deadly place. The sudden global winter will last for decades. At least 75% of all species on Earth will just vanish from existence. And so, as the day ends, the world is suddenly different. The continuity that went on for millions of years is no more. The era of the dinosaurs is over, just like that. Eventually, from the ashes of the old world, survivors emerged. Birds that are the direct descendants of the dinosaurs and mammals that would eventually become the dominant animals on the planet. Without the asteroid, I, I firmly believe that we probably would not. We'd probably be living in constant fear, never being able to have the opportunity to build things and get smarter and everything because we'd be living in a constant fear and constant, uh, you know, state of survival, essentially, just like we were, and you know, long ago. So I definitely am glad that kind of happened, as bad as that sounds. Without the asteroid, who knows what life on Earth would look like today? Without the sudden disruption of dinosaur continuity, that completely changed the planet and all life on it, we might have never had the opportunity to become what we are today. It's not clear how long the human era will last. So far, modern humans have been around for 0.1% of the time the dinosaurs were. And in this short amount of time, we've achieved impressive feats, from making the world our own to reaching space and splitting the atom. Yeah, see, I think it's pretty crazy to honestly think that the dinosaurs and, and probably, you know, who knows how many errors before that, the Jurassic and the uh, Paleolithic and the, all those crazy errors th that came way before us, who knows how long they actually lasted. And it's crazy to think that, you know, that they lasted so long that they lasted millions of years and that we've only really been here for what, technically, Technically speaking, like two million years or something like that. I think technically speaking from going, you know what I'm saying? If you want to go evolution wise, but you know, from a modern standpoint, we've only been here for like what, 200,000 years. So it is kind of crazy to think. It does definitely come in optimistic, but who knows? Cause we are way more evasive than anything that this earth has ever seen. So. Base and splitting the atom. Yet our future and our long-term survival are not a given. If we're not careful, it could end in an instant, like the age of the dinosaurs ended. But in contrast to them, we know that our continuity is fragile, even if it doesn't feel like it. We can be prepared and be vigilant and hopeful. If we're lucky, our journey will go on for a long, long time. All right, guys, we're going to end it right there. So, yep, another cursed video in the book, um, in the books. With that being said, guys, um, I do enjoy these. I will be doing the uh, the newest one that they did, hopefully soon. Um, with that being said, though, please join me in another episode of Mike's Intellectual Corner. Um, I join. I'll see you guys when I see you. I'm out. Peace.